Third time lucky with this video of West Bar or the big new development at West Bar. I'm looking up Snig Hill. Snig Hill comes from snigging an extra horse to a carriage to get it up the hill. So we're on Bridge Street just here, you can see the signpost. And people probably remember, I have to mention it because Miss Abishun will if I don't mention it. There used to be a bus station here, Bridge Street bus station, and all behind there at West Bar. There's this 300 million pound development. I've seen it say 350, I've seen it say 400 million. I don't think they're 100% sure yet. I think some of it's still quite fluid. And I'll tell you a bit of the information behind it. I have to do crib notes. So we've got a company creator called Herbo West Bar Limited. It's a joint venture between Herbo a developer for the public sector and Peveril Securities but Peveril Securities seems to be the parent company of a company called Bowner and Kirkland who if my memory serves me right did the Forge Island in Rotherham so at the moment it's about 160 million they've spent so far, 150, something like that. It's only half of the development. So I'll show you the buildings done so far. But I think all these flat down, flats down here are part of the Riverside development. I could be wrong on that, but it is next to the river anyway. But I'll just point this out. They've created something called Bluff Square here. But we're now coming behind the uh, new magistrates building. I think in all in total, there's going to be seven to eight additional buildings built here. So that's quite a lot. On top of the three built so far. But I'm coming from the back end, and what I'll do is I'll put information actually in. The description so you can look at a bird's eye view of the site with the forecast building or plots that's going to be on here but this has probably been here about 20 years this lot down here i think there's Irving mitchell's is uh, uh loads of flats etc i don't know what the occupancy rate is on it so you can see we're behind the uh the old court build, sorry, the new court building, I'll call it the old then. So you can pay for parking here. It says £8.50 all day parking, £2.50 for an hour, and two hours, four quid. This looks like the site car park here. But the two buildings in front of me, you can see, now this is where I got confused, it's actually called Soho Yard, both towers are Soho Yard and I'm looking at how many stories there are on my crib notes, won't be a second. So I've been, I look at my crib notes, one tower's 15 stories and the other's 19 and there's 386 prestigious units of or flats, one, two, three bedroom, and there's going to be two rooftop gardens for the exclusive use of the people who live there. But what I got confused with, Soho Gardens is actually the land around it where it's going to be a public type of park, so at the bottom, the surf like you and me can probably go in it with no issue, but the the two exclusive gardens at the top we won't be able to but 386 apartments doesn't sound that many it's not going to solve the housing crisis in Sheffield and it's certainly not going to help working class Sheffield is it because it does say exclusive apartments on it but my big issue is this land was prime industrial land that we should have been building modernised industry on. Some of our brands like Cutler, I'm 
engineering here in companies and special steel because it's absolutely ideal for a ring road. This over reliance on the service sector to me isn't going to work. It's not creating real wealth. And one of the issues is more and more people are working from home. So why are we building more and more offices in the uh, city? Because they're talking about, I think it's one million square feet of offices on this area or office space. You've got number one West Bar, which is 100,000 square feet of offices, but there could be another, well, there could be a million square feet of offices on here, all told. But they're also saying the thing is fluid, that we could end up with more apartments on here. So we don't know yet. That's still in the pipeline. So I wondered where the Soho name came from. And it came from a what was known as a Soho wheel that powered machinery for the cutlery industry around here. I've never heard of it, but sounds to me more like Soho in London, but they say That was the historical reason for it being called Soho Yard and Gardens. But there's also going to be 470 space car park here as well. But bearing in mind, I think it's 386 flats. It's not going to go very far, is it? So I was right, it's actually called Riverside down here because there's a sign for it. But I've done a lot of research on this. And we've got, oh, so it's Bauma, sorry, Bauma and Kirkland. And they've got, well, they did have a mental awareness week. Now, I did mental therapy for 20 years. Never believed that the NHS and companies deal with it properly. And I wasn't willing to sell my soul to get into the, the corporate world. It's like investors in people to me. Now I think that I just might as well show it you. One of these is a something to do with immigration. I don't know if it's that one or another one, but I know it's round here. But this area is going to be very mixed use, residential offices, leisure, I think, various other things. Now, as you can as you're aware, Sheffield City Council's involved in it. I don't know how much money they're putting it into it, if any, but I have done a freedom of information request for it. So uh, let's see what they come back with. But my understanding at the moment, legal and general, I've already put 160 million quid in up front for this development. See, it's blowing a bit today. I'm holding my crib notes. I hope they don't rattle too much. So I've told you everything from my crib notes. I can now get round and show you the development from different angles. But like I said, I don't believe service sector is the way forward. If more and more people are working from home, why a million feet, square feet of more office space? And the development is certainly not benefiting local working class Sheffield folk. To be honest with you, I don't feel comfortable around here because to me it's very oppressive and all alien. So we've got the Riverside development there, but I can, I'd be interested to know what the occupancy rate is on those flats. But at some stage they've got to create the gardens, the Soho gardens around here, like a, an open public park. And this looks like it's changed since the last time I came around. 
tried to film it twice and I've had a sound problem and also a video problem but hopefully you'll get a perfect video this time so sometimes third time look it'll be a much better video than I've done first time anyway so walking around here it feels more like a student area to say it's supposed to be business we all wore suits I worked at HSBC for 15 years we all wore suits I know they dropped that after but to me it doesn't hurt you going to work in a suit I think it does look a bit more professional and you do feel the part but it's not the modern way of doing things is it so that's the Riverside development so this is Soho Yard and let's carry on so we're sort of walking up Corporation Street and back in the early 90s this was the first stage of ruining the road network in Sheffield when they created the Ring Road just made life harder and harder to get out of Sheffield used to be a nice easy drive out from West Bar straight up Snig Hill turn at the hole in the road and I was on the Parkway roundabout and then they drove us down Corporation Street and just made it a nightmare and it's to me it's just as bad if not worse now So that took me ages to get across the road. The issue with Sheffield, we all used to be able to use the bus service back in the 80s. And we didn't need all this reliance on cars, it's an absolute nightmare. You only brought the car in on that odd occasion. You needed it to do something after work. <laughs> so you got so old. Yard just there, and the gardens will appear around the bottom. Of it one other figure from my crib notes before I forget it is that there's going to be 6,000 jobs created here. Well, that's the estimate anyway. But at the moment, we've got so two buildings that so old yard, and we've got one over there which is number one West Bar, which is the 100,000 feet of office space and there's going to be another seven or eight units on here but like I said it's fluid things can change there could be more flats could be more offices but it's all going to be mixed use so we'll get up to number one West Bar next so just looking back down but I mean I worked in Sheffield for 15 years no way would I want to live in Sheffield city centre you want to live in a leafy suburb, not in the city centre. That's what I don't think. Oh, that's what I think, sorry. So uh, we're coming up to number one West Bar now. But you can imagine, we've only got one, two and three and there's not going to be another seven or eight on this area so it could be anything from 300 million to 400 million and I'd be interested to know how much Sheffield City Council's putting into this development but it's more worth a walk up to West Bar Roundabout to show you the Dutch Roundabout up here So hopefully, third time lucky, it's my best video. Problems with the cobweb first time, second time, there was no sound on it for some reason. So hopefully this time you get the sound, you get a good picture quality because it's a nice blue sky. It always makes the buildings look better. But just imagine this drive out of work every day. Oh, used to be 30 minutes on bus back. 13 miles away to where I lived back in the 80s on the fast buses and uh, now it's uh, if you've done an hard day's work you don't want to be bumper to bumper with cars coming out 
number one West Spa from a different angle. That's the uh, court building. But like I said, let's just get you up to West Bar roundabout where the Dutch roundabout is going to be. So here's some more parking here for you. You can start to see the cycle lanes. Now there's one of these Dutch roundabouts in Holland. Sorry, not Holland, in Cambridge. Um, and there was a lot, some severe accidents on it. I think Sheffield Council were warned not to do it, but they did it anyway. And they're crowing about it at the moment. Uh, it's going to be fun, actually. Video in it when it actually is completed. I'll be down with Steve Coates and Mark Bannerman, but each corner's got this bit on. And uh, what's going to happen is pedestrians will have the first priority, cyclists are second, and then cars are third. What could go wrong? That's the old Penniston Road down there, but I want to just get over there and show you from that bottom angle if I can get across this road. So it took me ages to get across that road, but. I think it's quite important to show you the bottom end of Tenter Street. You can see this is more of the cycle lanes. This was an old pub. I wish they'd leave the name on the pub at least. Takes you up to Paradise Square up there. That's the uh, old West Bar Fire Station. It was also the police station. My granddaddy helped move into the new West Bar Police Station, which is I'm going to show you in a moment, which is now the Hilton. You can see more of the cycle lane stuff. It's going to be an absolute nightmare on here, I really think. I mean, Sheffield's not Amsterdam, it's not Cambridge, it's not Oxford. It's more like Rome built on seven hills. But there's where the Dutch roundabout's going to be, so you get an idea of it. But what they've done is they've ruined a perfectly functioning road down here and put cycle lanes down. I mean, I worked here for 15 years, so I know the area really well. Just here, you've got the old West Bar Police Station, now it's Hampton by Hilton. Now, other than that building there, the West Bar Police Station, all the other buildings on this right hand side are all new it's all it was all industrial land on the right hand side and then since 2000 when i've left working for hsbc all that's new up there but all this side and all the way up all this side for about a mile across and all the way up to the university roundabouts are flat high-rise flats so I don't know what the occupancy rate is on these flats but the left hand side the first building was Jubilee House I worked in there in 1985 and then the next one is the Pennine 5 which is where HSBC Midland Bank was now I'm my, my understanding is that the Pennine 5 can accommodate two and a half thousand people I'd be really interested to know how many people are actually working in there because we're building a million square feet of office space at West Bar when well, we must have got loads of offices empty in Sheffield and more and more people are working from home but just look at that while it's just so absolutely horrendous we've also got Sinter Tower the tallest one up there 27 stories and then just in front of it it's a bit hard to pick it out is white uh, craft, I think they call it, which will be 17 stories. It looks nearly as tall, but I think it's just uh, a bit of a trick. But, but that's it, really. You've got a full uptake on the West Bar. 
development, 300 to 400 million, 6,000 jobs. At the moment, 386 apartments, 1 million square feet of office space, which could change if they build more flats, vice versa, and creating 6,000 jobs. So uh, that's it. If you can like the video, follow the channel, click on notifications for new videos. I'll keep you informed because we're only halfway along with this 150 million ish that's been spent on it for free free buildings and it's going to go up to 300 to 400 million so over and out from Sheffield